What is up everybody, Rogue Hero here. So, today's video I'm bringing you guys my highly requested Hero deck profile for the um, March 2022 format. This is the same deck list I took to regionals and got 40 of place with. Now, as a disclaimer, I know you guys might be like, oh, 40 of place is trash, but it was 40th place in a 10 round event in a 500 plus player regional, which means, um, considering it was so many people in that regionals, they did top 64, got an invite. And of course I got my invite because I was 40th. Um, also as a disclaimer, I already had my invite. I legit just took this deck to regionals to have fun with and to see if I could top eight with the deck because I do believe in the power of the deck. I believe the deck is just as good as any other tier one deck. And I believe I proved my point on how good the archetype is throughout this prep season and throughout the regions because a lot of my opponents didn't know how to play against the deck. And they honestly, some of them even said they haven't played against a solid hero player to see what the deck can do. Cause I was making a lot of plays that people didn't know um, you can make with the deck like DPE, Dark Law, Sunriser, Wonder Driver consistently. And also, the games I did lost, like the only person who just blew me out was my round one opponent, which was a Salomon Gray player. He just had all the outs. And the other two games I lost, it was in game three, and it was due to me bricking. I lost a lot of um, dice rolls, but I ended up OTK due to the way I have my deck list up. So, yeah, man, this is a good shoot straight to the profile. I want to keep the intro too long. Just know this deck played extremely well. And if I didn't brick my, those games I bricked, which was game threes, I'm more than likely with a top eight. Like I said, my final record was seven wins, three losses, and two of those losses was game three bricking. So let's get to the deck profile, guys. All right. Starting off with monsters. Two Vion. Um, I don't like three. I know some hero players like three. I like two because I mainly just use it when I'm Pharaoh's with Pharaoh's com comboing. Now I do understand why people like three, right? But considering a hero lives is back at two, you want um a lot of those stratos in play. So two of these are good. Cause I, my deck count is 40 cards. Two increase as well. Um, this never was an issue throughout the event. Um, I know some people like to run one because of some other people, how they play their deck. However, I like two because if you open up one, half your deck is shut off. If you open up two, you're just extremely unlucky. So I, I like to run two because I do open up one and me knowing I have the extra one in my um, deck has saved my butt so many times. Three Ferris, really good staple. This is the best card in the deck, honestly. Um, you should be definitely be running three. I've seen some players run one. I've seen some players run two. Run three, because this is your combo, main combo starters of the deck. Also, man, check out this video on this iCard right here. I have my whole um, hero deck combo tutorial um, playtesting video. So check that out when you guys have some spare time. One of Dusty Gold, another card some hero players have been cutting. I completely disagree with it. This is the best card in the deck. It's an extender. One thing about um, meta decks that you guys gotta know, um, they extend like crazy. So obviously you're playing a rogue deck like heroes, you need an extender and a Dusty Gold is your boy. One Plasma, um, I cut Plasma before the regionals. I didn't know if I wanted to run it or not. After the regionals, however, I'm glad I did because there was a game where um, I couldn't make Dark Law, but the fact that I could make Plasma won me that game because my end field was Plasma DP off the Fusion Destiny play. And my opponent really couldn't do much and he pretty much just scooped it up because he couldn't get over Plasma and DPE. One Denier, one Mally, I'm sorry, two Mallys. Um, that's all you need. You don't need any other Destiny heroes. I did try, try Dino Tag. Dino Tag was bricky. Some people ask me, Chris, do you want to still run Celestial? I don't like Celestial. He's bricky as well. And yeah, the draw two is nice. However, I barely liked it him when I was running um, before DPE came out. But since DPE out is now, I don't need Celestial no more. Now, granted, Celestial is good prior to DPE and prior to the release of Denier because Denier helps the deck extend like crazy. However, considering um, we have Denier now, we can recycle our Mali. You don't need um, Celestial, it's just a waste of a card. Celestial is more better for nine hero focused decks, in my opinion. Two um, Shadow Mist, I think everyone in the community agrees on this. Two is good, um, three is too much, one is too little. One Liquid Soldier, Liquid Soldier is good. Um, you can run it at two, I've seen some players test it at two. I personally just like it at one, because I, I only find myself using this effect one time. If I have to use this effect more than once, I'm already in a losing position anyway. And the, also, the only other time I use this effect more than once is when I'm saving my Miracle Fusion. Because the one thing you guys got to realize about this deck, you don't always have to go gun ho, spit your whole hand to the field and pass. You guys want to save cards in your hand just in case your opponent neighbor or you. And yeah, so Miracle Fusion, saving that is really good because once you go Sunrise or draw two, get your miracle fusion set up your field and pass unless your hand is really bad and you have to go miracle fusion brand another monster you can hold that miracle fusion so far in your next turn if your opponent can't if your opponent outs your field and you need to recover you got the miracle fusion play to draw two more cards 
three stratos like i said because two hero lives three stratos it works i also like the fact that stratos can search out stratos so you can literally go in some cases because i was testing abyss dweller at one point and i you could go hero lives stratos go grab stratos summon stratos go search out honest neos or something else make abyss dweller or make any other level four xyz um it never came up in my play testing which is why i took my um abyss dweller out for another card in my extra that you guys will see later one honest neos i saw a couple of builds that did good and topped their regionals cut this that's cool for y'all i love my honest neos one of the best cards in the deck people never see it coming it protects dark law protects your plasma it's a staple at one in my opinion three ash blossom best hand trap of the format um i know some people say lancia is i disagree ash blossom is the best hand trap of the format reason being there's a lot of good rogue decks right now. Heroes is one of the good rogue decks. I think DD, I think DDDs is a rogue. I don't think DDDs is metal like that anymore. Um, because DDDs is really good, but I feel like Ash Blossom stops so much. And the reason why people think Ash Blossom suck is because they're Ash Blossoming the wrong card. You really have to know when to Ash. And that's something I had to realize myself. Cause I used to premature Ash Blossom all the time until I started playing more at low. Cause I realized like, look. I can ask this part of prosperity, but let me just ask the card they're going to grab, because more than likely the card they're going to grab is another card that's going to search through their deck. So I loved it. Wouldn't cut it for the world. This won me a game against Thunderies because he normal summoned after the fact to banish the um, add. I Ash Blossom. His effect didn't resolve. He couldn't summon again, and it shut his turn off completely. This literally helped me out of my OTS championships against Thunderies, and it also helped me out at regionals. It helped me win a game against Thunderies. Really underrated card this format. One Miracle Fusion, one Poly, these are staples. Uh, one Dark Calling, staple for their Dust of Gold. One Cobble the Grave, I like it, wish it was at two. I'll play it at three. Way better than Crosslight Designator. Crosslight Designator is trash to me. Um, it's too slow. And on top of that, I think it's only good in base because it's one of those cards, like, since you run so many cards, you just run the engine. I just don't want to commit half my uh, extra to hand traps for Crosslight Designator. Um, but Cobble the Grave is really good, so I really like it. One Rota, um, it was really good. It came up a couple times throughout the event. I usually side out um, Cobble the Grave and Rota anyway. So, yeah, they're good side out targets. Three mass change. I saw another guy who um, topped his regionals, top eight of his regionals. He cut it down to two. I thought about cutting it down to, but in my opinion, mass change is too strong to cut because you open up that and any dark, which your deck runs a lot of darks, you got a dark law, and dark law craps on the metal because people have to waste a lot of resources to get rid of them. Two hero lives, staple. Two Fusion Destiny staple, which it was at three. Um, some people think they're gonna, it's going to get cut down to one. I mean, like I said, Verde is the problem, not Fusion Destiny. Nevertheless, it is what it is. Best card in the deck, three Forbidden Droplet. This is the card of the format. Um, it's kind of sad that if you don't have Forbidden Droplet, you can't play this deck at full potential because there was a lot of games where I opened up Forbidden Droplet and I was just like, no matter what my opponent do, unless he's playing a back row deck, I got game. Because literally, I was playing as a Soul Soul player one round. I think it was around six or seven, or maybe it was around four. He had a feel of Baron and that other Source Soul monster that can negate. I'm like, okay, unless he has a back row like the Source Soul trap, I'm good. He just made his two monsters pass. I'm like, my turn, draw, Fusion Destiny, Chain, Droplet, send Fusion Destiny, send um, Mally, and popped off, and I got a free OTK. So, really good, really powerful. You're running at three, no exceptions. If you guys can afford this, try Forbidden Chalice or try more hand traps because this card is a staple, in my opinion. And also, another staple, three infinite impermanence. I was testing Valor over it. I don't understand why. I thought this is once per turn, but I love I love it, bro. Um, It stops the Scythe Lock. It can be used twice in a turn, and it can lock out an extra deck. And testing was amazing. At regionals, it was amazing. I wouldn't cut it for the world because right now it's just really good in this format. Now for the extra deck. Dun, dun, dun. The card that a lot of hero players have been saying sucks recently. Malicious Bang. Best extender in the deck. It board wipes. <laughs> I don't see how people say it sucks. Like, people play differently. I highly disagree. They smoking something. Um, Dread doesn't matter. I like it. Um, he's an extender. He can trample. He's really good. Wonder Driver. He helps you do all your combos. He really helps you set up DPE Sunriser really easy, which is not a bad board because um that draw you draw two and you get to make dpe because dpe could just run rampant two cross crusaders some players cut this to one i disagree with that multiple times throughout the regional i run into two it's a really good card do not cut this down in one man if you want you guys want to play this deck really good play that too no exceptions one blast because of, um you're playing three straddles so that you would that way you can have a target for your match change one ab zero staple i took out the abyss dweller for an asset 
And I remember why I didn't like acid. I never go into display. I barely made abs zero in the regionals. And the time I did make them, I link, I use it as an link extender to make um, dread decimator to blow up my opponent's field. I rarely ever do the ab zero acid play because that play makes you have to overextend your hand. And the way I play my deck, I always keep my miracle for the following turn. Now, is there random cases where if I play against a heavy trap Eldritch deck, it will be good? Yeah, however, considering I ain't playing against Eldritch, um, I didn't need it at the regionals. Nevertheless, I'm still gonna keep it for locals because I don't know if I might run into Eldridge again. I just don't know. So I'm just gonna run it right now, but you definitely could cut this for something else if you guys wanna try something different in your extra deck, like a um, XYZ monster, like Abyss Dweller, Baguska, or something that's just not acid. This definitely will get replaced when Wake Up Your Hero is out because there was a, there was a um, round in my tournament that I lost. I think it was, I think it was against either the Prank Kid player that beat me in round eight, or it was against one of the other players where I could have made Wake Up Your Hero with Miracle Fusion, I would have OTK. Obviously, the card isn't out yet, but yeah. Um, Acid is decent. I just, I didn't use it all day. Sunrise is staple. I've seen people cut this too. They're crazy. Um, Shining. This is a new addition to the extract as well. Shining is really good because you go into Wonder Driver a lot and you have Miracle Fusion targets. Now, a lot of times, you don't want to waste your, um, you don't want to really waste your Ab Zero. So you can make Shining. And then you can recycle back your Miracle Fusion with Wonder Driver and then make Ab Zero. And then also, if you're going to get rid of Shining, you can add back things like your Honest Nails or Stratos to help you pop off for the following turn. Um, because a lot of times, I, and if I have to overextend, like if I don't care about them doing Nibiru or whatever, I just overextend, make Shining so that if they do Nibiru, I can pop off Shining, grab back my Stratos for the next turn if I don't have like a Rota or something. Escarito, so those times when I get locked in the darks, so I can make Dark Law Steel with Miracle Fusion. DPE, one of the best additions to the hero deck. If Konami goops and ban this card, I'm gonna be so upset because I'm gonna have to go back to um, Dystopia. And not that Dystopia is bad, it's just DPE is one of the best boss monsters heroes has gotten in a while. It's one of the best boss monsters in the game in a while. And it's only getting abused in other decks outside of heroes because of Verde and Akande. If Konami do justice to the ban list and ban Verde, this card is gonna be a staple in only heroes because you're not gonna wanna run two Fusion Destinies in a random deck and hero cards to potentially brick. You know what I'm saying? So. This card's really good. Dangerous. I didn't use it. Um, however, there is times where it's viable. Like, if you go mid to late game. I use a lot of locals where um, they got rid of DPE, Baka Fusion Destiny, send Shadow Mist and um, Mally make Dangerous, or send Shadow Mist and something else to make Dangerous. Um, add back my um, go search for whatever card I need and go for game. And obviously, two Dark Law. Um, you can run three if you want, but I never found myself going to three. And my side deck. Two Lancia. Um, I didn't really play against no Flunderies other than one, and I didn't open up against them, but it was still really good. I sided this in against base. Um, I did open it up in the women's game. I also sided in against Dragon Link, which I found out for that matchup. You can make them go first and just play to go second game against that deck, because that deck can OTK like crazy and break through hero fields like a hot knife through butter. So, um, yeah, play against Dragon Link, make them go first, side in Lancia's. Um, also, three token collector. Shout out to my boy David, man. I've been meaning to tell him, man, this, man. Shout out to my boy David if he watch this. Um, I signed a token collector for base because he told me to sign it for base. And it actually came up. Unfortunately, I lost my game because my opponent just had a good, really good hand and he came back and won. However, with that being said, token collector, man. Amazing. Um, it won me all my games against Sora. So there was one case where I didn't open it up. I um, polyed off my um, Sunriser Liquid. Channeling one, channeling two, go grab Miracle. Liquid draws through. I drew into a token collector, pitched the collector, and my source opponent knew that if he try to make tokens, token collector's gonna pop, come out, pop his tokens, and win game. So yeah, it's a really good card. You needed that three for source. So I didn't lose against that one source so to that yesterday. I played against two of them, so it was really good. Three draws over three Nibiru, um, because I don't run Nibiru in my side deck. I like draw over Nibiru. Main reason because. People say Nibiru is really good for like base decks and um, other decks that spam. In my opinion, Nibiru sucks this format. It's only good against decks that are not meta. Because almost every meta deck runs the Brave Token Engine. PK, Sword Soul, Base. I mean, the list can go on. So I rather say I Droll and Lockbird versus those decks because you can Droll them before they even get to the Token Engine or when they start searching with the engine and kind of slow their turn off. Now, obviously, you can if I if you're gonna play Nibiru, you probably should main it. But 
they gonna get that t brave token griffin out before the fifth summon anyway so i just like Drow because it's also good against decks like um ddds despias things like that so it came up a lot so i think it's my uh, it's also good against brave pranks too because this deck has a hard matchup against prank brave prank hits um it has a good matchup against um brave pranks however it has to go first that matchup is literally a dice roll game so if you open up this against brave pranks you can shut their turn off before they bring out the griffin and you usually win three d barrier for sorso um i didn't sign it in um however um i actually forgot however at locals this is clutch because I had siding in Sword Soul Player and Wins. I also was siding in for DDDs and the random synchro deck because my boy David got me scattered that deck. However, nevertheless, man, it's a really good card. Um, it didn't use it all regionals. However, I would have used it if I played against more Sword Soul and more decks that was like random, like maybe the Hero Mirror Match or something like that. Rare Reboot and three Cosmic Cyclones for back row decks. This is for like those Eldritch decks that run a lot of back row and like Sky Strikers. And that's pretty much it, man. So this is my hero deck profile in detail, man. I hope I explained everything properly for you guys. Um, shout out to everybody who sh in the hero group who showed me love. Shout out to everybody who I met at the regionals and gave me a lot of support and encouragement to keep my channel going. Um, yeah, like I said, this deck play is really good. It's really powerful, really good. It's just really expensive, which for the price of a hero deck, you guys could build a probably a better deck for cheaper like arguably brave prank is probably a better deck however in the hands of a right pilot heroes is just as good all right guys this is your boy rogue here bringing guys my um hero deck profile if you guys want to purchase this deck you guys can buy the cards through my links down below i have a tcg player link i have my Yu-Gi-Oh trading card mint link which gets you seven percent off of all your orders and also if you guys want to get this cool play mat you guys can check out my channel sponsor imperial duelist all right it's your boy rogue hero and i'm signing out peace stay innovative deuces you guys have a great rest of your day